Hello and welcome to another IC3D tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you the ins and the outs of the Render Manager. Now, the Render Manager is a separate application, but upon startup of the Render Manager we're going to want to be inside of IC3D just to establish our input location. Now, of course, the Render Manager is only going to render ray tracing output, so if you're not using the ray tracer, you're not going to need this. To start with the Render Manager setup, the first thing we're going to want to do is head on over to our Edit and Preferences menu. Once inside of Preferences, we're going to go over to our Paths. Inside of here, we're looking towards our Ray Tracing Render Manager options. The Hot Folder Path. This is our Input Path. So we're going to want to not only create an input folder, but we're going to want to create this somewhere that we can access. Now, of course, we can do this over a networked service, so if you have somewhere where you go to render, like I do, you can connect to that and you can render over the web. Now, with that being said, the computer that you have the Render Manager set up on has to have the Render Manager open, and it must have access to the computer that IC3D is currently sending that render from. Now, of course, from here, once you've created your input folder, you can now go ahead and connect your input folder to this path inside of our preferences. Mine is on my desktop, so that's what I'll be using today. Once here, go ahead and hit save, and now we're going to want to set up a quick render. I'm going to go ahead and open up a previous project that you guys may be uh, familiar with. And then from here I'm just going to do a control E. That's our quick shortcut to get into our high res image export. And then from here I'm going to just do a quick little image, so I don't want a large one. So we're going to stick with the current settings. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the, again, RAS Ray Tracer. This must be used if we want to render with our Render Manager. And then from here, I'm going to set this down to, say, 256, and then hit Export. Now, one thing to note is when you're exporting an image, if you're using the ray tracing export, this RAS ray tracer, saving your image isn't going to matter because it's not going to save it in the place you want it to go. Since, and again, we're going to have a small warning that pops up after this window, but just note that all we really need to focus in on is the file name and the file type. This is the most important part as where it's going is into our input folder that we have already set up in our preferences. So for this file name, I'm just going to set it up as test1, and just note that I'm just going to set it up as test1. Hitting save, you'll now get a small explanation of what we just did, and just so you guys know, it is again, you have specified to output your file using the IC3D ray tracer. Ray traced output is managed and processed by the IC3D render manager. So you'll need to make sure the render manager is started. Now in our case, we're going to want to just, <clears throat> you're going to want to make sure the render manager is started. Now in our case, we haven't done that just yet, but that's okay, because what we want is once we hit yes, this is going to go ahead and send this over to our input folder. So if we head over to desktop and we locate that input folder we created, I'm going to notice that we not only have a render manager job, with my ID. This is found again in the preferences panel to change your name. And then I'm going to have a info file. This is essentially the file that's going to tell the render manager how to ray trace this file here. Now from here what we're going to want to do is we can actually close IC3D altogether as we're done in the main application. So from here, we're going to want to now go ahead and find our render manager. This is located on a PC inside of your program files inside of the IC3D suite folder. 
And if you're on a Mac, you're going to want to locate the Applications folder, and that will then be again in the IC3D Suite folder. Double click to open up your IC3D Render Manager. And from here, initially, you shouldn't have anything in your job queue. Now, to get something into our job queue, we're going to have to hook on our input and our output folders. And to do that, we're going to want to go ahead and go into File and set a hot folder. Now, before we do that, however, we want to go ahead and make sure we have also created an output folder. This is going to tell where to send this render after it's processed. Now, of course, if you're processing an Opsys render, that is going to then send it up to the cloud rather than sending it to that location. From here, we're going to want to then go into File, Set Hot Folder, and this is going to be our input folder. Now, if we have Auto Start selected, this is going to take that file in and immediately begin. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and hit pause just so we can talk about what happens when the job comes in and we can explain a little bit about what's going on initially. So from here, what we're going to want to do now is go ahead and hook up that hot folder and hit select folder. Now what you're going to see is initially the job will come in with a job name, and if you hover your mouse over it, you'll get a quick description about what has been submitted and what type of width, height, number of samples, and when the job was submitted, and by who the uh, user, in my case. This was from my copy of IC3D. From here, what we can do is we can take our job name, it is going to be a high res output. And we can go ahead and see how much progress it has made. 0% since we haven't started it just yet. And it's currently waiting for our start command. Now before we do that start command, we're going to want to set up that output folder. So I'm going to hit set. And again, hooking up that up to the output. And then again, making sure this little use output folder is checked. Now from here, we can go ahead and look to our bottom. The start button is going to start or stop our render manager. So that's kind of our main green button to go, red button to stop. We have auto start. This is great if you're going to use a computer remotely. This is going to auto start the uh, renders as they come into the input folder. And once they go in, you can either choose to delete them or store them in the input folder so you can come back to any render that needs to be refreshed or maybe you want to change some settings. Now we can view our log file hitting this button. Now of course we don't have a log file just yet but this will give us information about the rendered product here. Now for right now we're not going to look at it uh, so we'll take a look at it after we've rendered out our first job. Now, of course, we can now hit run the single job. So hitting start over here will run the entire queue, while hitting this small run single job with a job selected will run or it will stop the job depending on if it's running or not. Run single job will run just a single job in the queue, while stop job will hold the selected jobs for later. You can then move jobs to the top depending on which one you would like. Now, of course, by default, this is all set in by order of who hit the render manager first. So if you do have a render that is coming in a little late, but it needs to be up at the top, you want to just select your job and go ahead and either hit move job to the top or move job up in the list so that you have more priority on your job. We can also reset selected jobs to waiting or delete the selected jobs. Now, of course, before we start rendering, we do want to check our render options. These are going to be options that are found inside of the render options, render options menu. And then opening that up, we'll open up our options when menu. And opening that up, 
will allow us to control the high-res texture size. I leave this at 4K when rendering on my own computer, as for most renders this is a great place to be, but of course if you need that higher resolution you can bump this up to 8K, but be careful going up to 16K as it will cause slower performance and you may see some chugging in the render. And then of course we want to configure that RAS ray tracer because depending on if you're using a GPU or a CPU, you'll want to use these separate options. The NVIDIA GPU will use your GPU to render your job faster, while the Intel CPU will also do a great job rendering, but it won't touch your GPU, allowing you to just render on your CPU. Now distributed rendering and distributed GPU rendering are only unlocked if <clears throat> now the two options in <clears throat> now the two options for distributed are specifically for shepherd and sheep uh, <clears throat> are specifically for shepherd and sheep render farms now if you don't have this option this is not something you're going to want to click and if you do this is how you're going to set up those that farm i'm going to use the nvidia gpu renderer as that's what I've got in my machine today. And I'm going to leave it at 80% allowed resources. And of course, 4K for my texture size once again. And for adaptive sampling for the GPU, I'm gonna want this on faster or fastest, depending on what you'd like. I'm going to leave this on fastest just to get the quickest render. Hitting apply, and then going ahead and hitting okay. We can now start rendering our job. So depending on uh, if we want to fill this queue or if we just want to render a single job, we can go ahead and just hit start. And now we can sit back, relax, or we can head back over to IC3D and continue working. I'll see you guys back in just a sec once this render's done. And we're back just before it completes. <clears throat> and there it goes. Now, just note, if you are rendering multiple jobs using the multiple export option inside of IC3D, you will have only one job name inside of here, but what you will see is towards the bottom, where the no jobs available currently says, it will let you know which job or which render it's currently on, and it will let you know how many it currently has left until that job is complete. From here, let's go ahead and head over to our output folder and check out our tiny image. Hey, that's not too bad. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I Adam Chop for a quick IC3D quick bite. No. Thank you so much for joining me, Adam Chop for an IC3D quick bite.